Hey everyone, Christopher Beast here. Today I'm going to be covering all of the official Scorn information that was covered by the devs in their monthly informational updates. These updates are called the Dev Pulses, and they started in December of last year, and a new one has released every month since. They provided information about the game's development and behind the scenes info. So really, with no more further delay, let's just get right into it. Let's start off with the first of these pulses that released way back in December of 2021. This first pulse introduced us to Megna, Scorn's community manager. He seems like a cool person who also enjoys horror games. They also introduced us to the lead 3D artist, Nikolai, as well as a brief introduction of the biomechanical contraptions. So going into Nikolai from the art department, several questions were asked and their responses were given. First, we learned that they have 15 3D artists, who are split between ZBrush sculpting, 3D technical modeling, and texturing. There are 8 ZBrush artists, 2 technical 3D modelers, and 5 texturing artists. Together, these guys are responsible for, for all the art we have seen in the game. They were then asked about how they felt about the community response towards the art, and they say they were in part motivated by how positive the reaction has been so far to the art. Which honestly, the art's amazing, so I think they deserve the positive reaction that they got. From there, they were asked the major inspirations that drive the art, aside from the very obvious Geiger. Nikolai responded that nature and human anatomy have played a tremendous inspiration into the art, and they try to incorporate as much of that as possible. Also, if they ever need ideas, biology has been an endless source for designs for them. They then showed off one of the biomechanical devices in a quick clip I'm going to play right now. From here we can move on to the next pulse. The second pulse which was released in January. This month's focused on the audio within Scorn, so let's get right into it. In order to create the audio of the game, the devs of Scorn have received help from two main composers. One is Adis Kirkit, or Athiak, a Bosnian sound designer who is behind the dark and industrial sounds of the game. And the other is Lustmord, or Brian Williams, a Welsh-born musician who has been making ritualistic primordial sounds for decades. They then followed with a series of questions for Lust Mord about his work. He talked about how he began work with Ebb Software before transitioning over to an explanation as why setting the tone through audio is important. To quote him exactly, the visuals tell the story, the sound pulls you further into the experience. When asked about the central theme of the sound design in Scorn, he stated the music explores wonder, emptiness, loss, along with a sense of why. These two's work is quite impressive from just the trailer alone, and I can't wait to see more of it when the game releases. The Pulse also shared the game's vinyl cover album, which will be available to reserve on Kickstarter. They also asked Dragoslav, a sound developer, some questions, with him shedding light on the process of sound development, stating that large parts of the design is considering both the physical, what is actually happening in the scene in question, the weight of the creatures moving, the sounds they would make as they move, as well as the emotional, what feelings should be conveyed by this scene, terror, fright, interest, whatever, hopelessness. When asked about how many of the sounds of Scorn were created and how they were created, he said they were created through the destruction of all sorts of things. Vegetables, wood, bark, cardboard, chairs, pipes, meat, bones, stones, you name it. Which I find very interesting because it shows that there was a lot of work put into the sound design of the game, which we already knew, but it's nice to see just how much work. Entering February this year, we got the third pulse, this one being a focus on the environmental artists. This one immediately had a line that caught my eye very early into the pulse, and that was, the world itself feels like its own character within the game, showing just how much importance the devs have placed into environmental design. To showcase more information about it, they interviewed Lazar Stojek, an environmental artist, and I'm sorry if I pronounced his name wrong. Lazar walked us through the process of a map being designed, from the simple level and layout coming from the director, all the way to the modeling and texturing done by the artist. Lazar continued explaining the importance of architecture and symbolism, and explaining how it was crucial in developing environments within this game, stating people need to instinctively respond to and understand specific shapes without even needing to think about it. He gives two examples, which I'll show now. 
First, a room that, due to its Gothic inspirations, gives a sense of sacred nature to the building. While on the other hand, this dark and moody room that is compressed and cramped gives an industrial, utilitarian feel. He finalized stating that their main goal was to make the player feel uneasy. Not just because of gore, but because of a sense it was something that was wrong. Familiar and understandable, but wrong. Next up is the fourth Pulse Monthly. In this dev blog, the creators talk about possibly the most core mechanic in the game, at least in terms of gameplay, and this is puzzles. Scorn is set up to be a game heavily revolving around its atmosphere. Because of this, puzzles will play a huge role in storytelling. The devs want everything to have reason and purpose, and the puzzles you encounter and solve will reveal secrets about the world and, generally speaking, what's going on in the game. And like all atmospheric horror games, not only will puzzles tell you the story, but also will the world and environment around you. A few things to note. The dev state puzzles will often control the pacing of its game, so location of these puzzles is going to be critical. Next, the devs want puzzles to feel natural during gameplay. They don't want them to be too frustrating, as that will ruin the game's experience, but also not too easy to make the game a breeze. So, they're going to be moderately in difficulty. Next up, we have the fifth monthly pulse. In this monthly pulse, the devs give info on the creative art designing properties of the game. To begin with, they start with explaining how much detail is put into crafting all their unique building assets that will be used to build the world of Scorn. The man in charge of the creative team who designs these assets is Lazar Mesaros. One thing he mentions about the design process is that there are limited world references for anything you might encounter in Scorn. And when asked, how would you describe the style presented in Scorn, Mesaros states the style embraces architecture, technology, arts, literature, and even biology. It's a coming together of the Gothic style and modern industrial elements, often impregnated with biological elements. Some major things to note from this dev update, Meseros mentions a location in Scorn, known as the Fields of Decay. I'm going to play the quick video they showed showcasing this location, but Meseros describes this place with its gigantic glooming buildings peering through the frog, its atmosphere always leaves me with a disturbing feeling of loneliness and dread. So now I'm going to play the clip they showed of that place. Following that, we have the sixth monthly pulse. In this pulse monthly, the developers discuss the making and design process of their weapons and explain the role they play in Scorn. The devs start out by explaining how having a weapon in a horror game can significantly impact gameplay and player decisions. After this, they emphasize, however, that although there is shooting within the game, Scorn is by no means a shooter. They then introduce the man who is the source of these weapons, creative director and CEO Labormir. Pequar. I think that's how you pronounce that. Sorry, once again, if I mispronounce some names here. He oversees weapon-related ideas from concept to completion, ensuring they are consistent with the overall themes in Scorn. They then go on to quickly explain the process of getting a weapon through the concept phase. In the first part, Pequar is asked a couple of questions, one of them being, what kind of weapons are there, and what role do they play in the game? To answer the first question, he states, the weapons found in Scorn are mostly there as optional tools for progression. For the second question, he answers, the weapons are relatively standard in terms of functionality, but this was an interesting element of their design. Adding recognizable gun types into the game, such as the pistol, shotgun, or grenade launcher, can influence how players perceive them, and ultimately, how they are used. He also explains that he believes the first weapon we will encounter could be the most important one. Quick quote, while it's the only melee weapon we have, it doubles as a tool to interact with various mechanisms throughout the game. Another question he asks, is why ammo will be a limited resource. To this he responds, Scorn is an experience with horror at its core, so limiting ammo is a simple way to ensure the player doesn't become overpowered. From here we can move on to the seventh monthly polls. This was a shorter one that covered a bunch of questions from the community, starting off with details that the OST, digital art book, and even physical art book will be available for purchase separately. Actually, personally, I pre-ordered the physical art book off Amazon, and it says it will be able to arrive by December 6th. So, that's something we have to look forward to. They then stated that they expect a complete playthrough of the game to vary between 6 to 8 hours, before giving more details on the specs required to run the game in 4K. Those specs being a Windows 10 or 11, 
a AMD Ryzen 5 3600, or an Intel Core i7 8700, 16 gigabytes of RAM, NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2070, 50 gigabytes of storage, and an SSD. And finally, there is the eighth and most current monthly pulse. This one was mainly about their visit to Gamescom and really didn't provide too much details regarding the game, as we are quickly approaching the release date in about a month. Alrighty guys, that's all I've got you for you guys today, and before I go, here's some quick things. One, I've started a new Discord for people hyped up about this game and is linked below. And two, on that Discord, a user named Ant was a huge help to the production of this video, helping me with scripting. So, thank you to him. All in all, I'm excited for more information to be released as we get closer to the release day on October 21st. But until then, this has been Christopher Beast, and I hope to see you all next time.